second Celtic Advent. Today's one of my favourite days, actually, of Advent. In the Northern Hemisphere, it's the shortest day, so the least amount of daylight today, which is kind of, for me, I feel like it's a turning point. And, uh, and it's a beautiful antiphon that we're looking at today, which actually talks about light. Why don't we pause in his presence? I'm not sure what kind of day you're having, what day you've had. For me, it's been really busy. And, uh, and yet in the middle of all the busyness, there's been a beauty to it as well. And there have been some lovely moments. But let's just pause, breathe slowly. Recenter our scattered senses on the presence of God. We open ourselves to you once again, Lord. We invite you to illuminate our hearts, illuminate our minds, fill us with your light. Amen. So today's antiphon, O morning star, splendor of eternal light and sun of righteousness, come and enlighten those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. So as I said, this is one of my favorite antiphons today. Not necessarily my favorite, but definitely it's right up there. And I do think it's extra special to think of welcoming Jesus as light on this shortest day as we are in the Northern Hemisphere. I think I always think of literally from today, our days get brighter. Beautiful. So we are made for light and we thrive and we flourish when we're in light. Yet we do also have a tendency toward the dark. And the Bible talks about men preferring darkness because their deeds are evil. We'd rather hide in the dark, probably because of our shame, than be exposed in the light. I've been thinking about this little passage with Adam and Eve quite a lot this year. So when Adam and Eve first fell in the Garden of Eden, I've kind of been brought up on the story that God couldn't stand the sin and so he had to separate them away from him. Uh, to be honest, I see it quite differently now. So when they first fell, I didn't get the sense, when you read what God did next, I don't get the sense of him separating. He comes to look for them. Where are you? But instead of stepping into plain sight, Adam and Eve preferred to hide away. They were the ones that separated themselves, actually. They didn't want to be seen. They were full of shame. They didn't want their deeds to be exposed. They'd rather be distant from God than come close to him. I actually love the fact that God doesn't step away as his first reaction to them falling in sin. But he comes looking. That's, that's the kind of God that I've become familiar with. The kind of God that when I've done something wrong, I show up my frailty. He doesn't chastise me. He, I mean, he wants me to improve, of course. He wants me to, th to flourish and to thrive. But he comes looking for me. He's, 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 not, he's not saying, oh, I don't like your sin. He's like, no, I, I want to be close with you. He comes looking for me. And it was Adam and Eve that chose to separate themselves from God of their shame. I know what that feels like too. So often, if there's that sense of, oh, I've done something wrong, I'm not sure I want to be close to God in those moments. I'd rather be distant actually, because I feel exposed and I feel like there's a shame that comes. 
that I don't really want to have to deal with. So I recognize that with Adam and Eve wanting to hide away, I think it's in me. I've also this year been using an examine prayer, which is, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, it's uh, one of the prayers that would be part of the Ignatian spirituality. And don't worry if you're not familiar with that, you can research that separately if you want. I might put a link at the end of this video to a little examine prayer, guided prayer. And one of the ones that I've been using, the guide, uh, just uses this tiny little phrase that really took me by surprise the first time, where at the beginning of coming to God in prayer, he just says, just let God look at you. And I found it really disarming at first. I said, just let God look at me. I know, well, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that, actually. And it's like, why does God want to look at me? <laughs> and there was that sense of, you know, the invitation was just, just be open. Just bear all. Allow God to see everything exactly as you are. And I found it actually quite difficult to engage with. And I realized that there was that part in me that would rather be hiding away. And it's like, well, I'm going to pretend that God can't see that. And I'm going to pretend he doesn't know about that. And of course, how ridiculous. He knows everything. So why would I not say, here I am, open, wide open to you. You can see everything. The beauty of light is that it creates the environment that naturally causes life. In his light, we find life. And if we move completely out of the darkness, we find fullness of life. There's plenty to chew on in all of that. Let's ponder for a moment longer. Am I happy to step into the light and just let God look at me? Enjoying his creation and enjoying my openness to him. Let's do that right now. Let's let God take a look at you. Just be open before him right now. Spend a minute with that. Just dwell on this thought a moment longer. Light brings life. Where do you want to see life extending and flourishing? Maybe in you, maybe in those around you. Let's just briefly bring those prayers to God right now. Where do you want to see life extending and flourishing? And a simple action again for today. It's a beautiful song by Stephanie Gretzinger, one of the most beautiful worship leaders that I'm familiar with. And uh, she has a simple song that says, Open up, let the light in. Why not choose today to pray a daily short prayer that invites the light of Christ into your life to more fully come search you out bring you into fullness of life. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you are the morning star. Thank you that you are the day spring, that in our darkness you've caused your light to shine. And when we step out of our darkness and into your light, you bring us into fullness of life. And so we choose, once again, right now, to step out of our darkness and out of those areas of deeds that are evil and we step into your light. Expose us, show us the ways that we need to change in our lives and in those around us that are still in darkness, we invite your light 
to be shed abroad into their hearts as well. Those that we know and love, our family, our friends, those who live around us, our neighbours, we invite your light into their lives this Christmas time. Come, O morning star, splendour of eternal light, and sun of righteousness, come and enlighten those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. Amen. Amen. Just a few more sleeps. See you tomorrow.